Hi everyone, welcome to this next Middle Earth painting video. What I'm going to be looking at over the next couple of videos is these amazing models here. So what we've got, on the right we've got Legolas and we've got Gimli. These come from the original Fellowship of the Ring box set, which came out when the original Fellowship of the Ring film came out in November 2001. So these models are almost 20 years old, and they're still as fantastic as they were when they came out. On the left, we've got Aragon from the Attack at Helm's Deep, or Heroes of Helm's Deep, I should say. And this came out in November 2002, so slightly younger than the other two, but still a fantastic model. I'm painting these as part of a commission, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to just run you through how I paint them. So keep an eye out on my channel. I'll have three separate videos, one for each, hopefully very short. And if they're useful for you, that's perfect. If, they, if you enjoy them, please leave a like, please comment and please subscribe because these are fantastic models and I remember when they came out I was heavily into painting Warhammer Fantasy Battles and these came out and they looked quite small um, they were on round bases and my brother had them and I took one look at them and I was like nah not really for me but some 20 years later this is my main game and these miniatures are still fantastic so hopefully people can find it useful and these guides can actually be of some service to you all so please uh, set yourself down and enjoy these videos. So this version of Legolas is actually from the early part of the film. So I uh, think Mines of Moria kind of place. It's before they arrive at Lothlorien because of course he hasn't been given an elven cloak and he's not been given any of the cool sort of like bow and quiver that uh, Gladriel gives to him. So this is very basic vanilla Legolas. But it's a really interesting one to paint. So. I'll run through first the base colours I use, so you can get an idea of my starting point when I come to apply highlights. So first up, on the flesh, so on his face and his hands, my very first go-to paint is Vallejo Model Colour Basic Skin Tone. It's a good flat flesh tone, um, covers well, and just basically does what you need it to do. That's then followed by a flesh wash, which just sort of like lifts the tone a bit and sort of like darkens the recesses. When we come to look at hair, especially for blonde hair like this, I use Vallejo Game Color Earth. It's a brown, but once you apply a wash of perhaps strong tone to it and then highlight it with a lighter color, it really gives a nice effect for blonde hair. For the quiver, which is on his back here, for the quiver and the bows, the bow, so the main portions of this, not the decorative bits on the end, I'll be using model color chocolate brown and I've looked online and it looks like these bits are quite dark so I'll try to keep these dark by applying a dark wash after we've given them a base coat. For Legolas's tunic, so the main part of his clothing there, I'll be using game color extra opaque heavy green. It's a good dark green and it's one I use quite a lot. I used it recently on my General Veers painting and it highlights very well with light browns so that's what we'll be doing here Legolas has got sort of like a very light grey undergarment sort of like t-shirt under his tunic so we'll be using a light grey to paint that it's just these bits on his sort of elbow here and the elbow down there oh leggy where'd you go there you go he's back Then I'll be using, and I haven't used this paint for a long time, but his um, trousers sometimes look light blue, sometimes look darker. But what we're going to go for today is a lighter blue colour, and I'll be using, I believe this is by Army Painter, it's Wasted Jeans. It's from their Zombie Side range. It's a bit of a mix, pain to mix, but once you get a good consistency on it, it's a very nice light blue. Then finally, for um, his braces on his arms, and his boots will be using black grey. I try not to use black as a base coat when I'm painting things which are potentially like leather because highlighting from black can really make it look like you're actually ending up with grey. Whereas using black grey and a wash of dark tone gives you a better starting point than using black because if you wash black it, it stays black, it doesn't make a difference. So these are the first batch of base colours we're going to use. There will be some metallics on the bow, but I, knew, I like to do those after I've applied the base coats and after I've highlighted most of the things. So I'll go ahead and apply the base coats, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about washes. If 
I don't kick everything over that is. So the basic base colors are down. And you can see I've not put too much effort into picking out the belt yet. Um, there is a little bit of um, paint on his face which isn't too much of an issue because now that all the base colors are down we actually start to apply some washes. So on Legolas' face we start off with a game wash, flesh wash which will just accentuate the details on this face and make the eye sockets easier to see. So that's good for when we come to actually pick out the eyes. That will also be used on his hands as well because this one hasn't actually got gloves on. And then pretty much everything else with the exception of anything that's black on here, so his boots and his vent braces, they will get a coat of Army Painter Strong Tone. So that will be his, um, his tunic his hair, his bow, his quiver, his trousers. But then the two remaining black parts of the, um, the braces on his arms and his boots will be Army Painter Dark Tone. So I'll go ahead and apply these and then I'll come back and I'll, we'll talk a bit more about the layers that we're going to use to actually pick out the details on this model. So Leggy's got the washes on. It looks a bit messy because it is just washes. But that's fine because we're now coming to the point where we need to up a little bit. So as you can see there, the flesh wash has pulled quite nicely in that eye socket. But if I turn them around, it's not particularly pulled very much in that one. So I may apply a little bit more wash. That's mainly just because I like to use the wash to darken the eye socket before I actually paint the eyes. But that's by the by. The flesh, face and arm, face and hands he's got, sorry. Basic skin tone on the raised areas, followed by light flesh. If you've watched any of my previous videos you see I've done this a thousand times. It's a very standard way I paint faces. I might even add a little extra flesh wash in between that's just to sort of like knock back the brightness of the um, the skin highlights just so that they they seem a bit more sort of natural. So with that done I'll go back to his hair and for the hair because he's gonna be a, uh, a pretty blonde I'll highlight that directly with Iraqi sand. Then after the Iraqi sand has been applied, I'll add a little bit of off-white just to lighten the Iraqi sand up. I do have a colour called Bone White, which would probably do the same, but the off-white gives me a bit more control about how light it's going to be. So that'll do his hair, and we've got quite a bit around the back that will also need to be done. We've got the feathers on his... Um, arrows there so they'll also be done with the Iraqi sand and then with the off-white as well just to sort of pick out the fletching spin it back round so the tunic he's got here we've got the heavy green I'll give it a coat over with that again leaving any sort of recesses so you can see the the, mid, the bit down the middle is a bit um, there's a, like a, a joint in the cloth so I'll leave that. Um, I'll possibly leave anything in sort of like flaps and folds. After that, we'll be adding a little bit of Vallejo Game Color Earth. But what we where we won't be adding it is this front section. So he has what almost looks like extra large lapels at the front here that go up the side and in the middle. And that actually in the film looks like a darker piece of cloth. So I won't be highlighting that any further than the original coat, just simply because I want to try and keep a sort of differentiation between the two. And then to highlight the green further with the third layer, it's model colour Iraqi sand. Very simple, very easy. No worries there at all. On the trousers and the sleeving here, it will be Vallejo light grey. If I need to add some white, I will, but these are relatively small areas, so it won't particularly make much difference. The trousers, I will add in a little bit of the wasted jeans colour, which I used previously, which is in my drawer and I can't get to it. But that's just to keep the blue tinge, because I don't want this to turn to grey, because I'm trying to keep it slightly different. For the strapping that we've got there on his chest, again, that will be Vallejo Earth, followed by... A very light layer of Iraqi sand. Very easy, no need to add a wash to this one, it is just what it is. You just paint the very raised areas carefully with a small brush. 
boots will be a little bit of black grey because we've given the black grey a wash with dark tone um, adding more black grey doesn't particularly do much so it'll be black grey a little bit of London grey and then if needed a very very extreme highlight of the light grey if I'm doing boots I like to do the light high grey light grey highlight on anything which is very raised so I'll save it for sort of like qu quite um, obvious folds in the boot so if we're looking at his legs here I'll save it for sort of like these ridges along here and the ridges there just because if you do it too much it turns the black to a bit of a horrible grey and it doesn't quite doesn't look right um, the bow that again will be chocolate brown highlighted with the game color earth and then the last bit really on this and I think this is the last bit is he has got some detailing so there's detailing at the top of the quiver there's some detailing on the back detailing up here detailing at the bottom and then on the bow at the top and the bottom of the bow there's a bit of detailing so I'll pick that out I think I don't think it's gold from looking at reference photos if it's not gold I'll be picking it out with Iraqi sand but if it is I'll just be using my regular Vallejo model color gold not a bad color but I, I prefer it not to be gold because gold's not particularly great coverage so that's it for Legolas it's, again relatively simple model but I'll go away, apply the highlights, and then come back and show you what the finished item looks like. And also as well, just to sort of like shout out, if anyone has got any questions on any of the techniques that I'll be using, because of course I won't be doing it on camera, um, please just leave a comment and I can always answer them or do potentially something else on it so you can see. So I'll cut here and return shortly. So as you can see, we've actually come a quite a long way from the last video. Um, the last video everything was just blocked in and it had been washed and it all looked grubby and a bit, to be honest, it looked a bit crap, didn't it? But now we've had a chance to add some extra layers, it's starting to look pretty good. And actually I think, to be honest, this is pretty much done. So what we've done is we've gone in again and we've just re-highlighted the cloth, which adds that extra depth around the areas where there's folds in the cloth. We've done this on the um, his main tunic, on his arms here and on his legs. Um, I've chosen to go for a different colour, so I've gone for like a grey on the sleeves, on the arms, and a lot, very light blue for this, uh, the legs of the trousers. The boots, his boots are black, so we've just given them a little bit of a highlighting with some um, the grey paints, and it's a common method I use for highlighting black. I don't like to go too much because if you end up with grey, and we did the same on the braces on his arm here and down here. For the face, um, I actually came back in with the flesh colour again, did the flesh, um, it, it kind of worked but then I needed to give it another wash of flesh wash just to sort of like, and you can see there's a differentiation, there's sort of like three tones of flesh colour on his face, there's a dark, a mid and a light, and that middle wash is how I sort of get the mid tone. Um, painted the eyes in a very, very, very simple way, very good brush, very fine tip, just do a line of white paint in the socket and then same brush, very very thin, good point on it dab of black paint in the middle if you need to tidy it up you can tidy up around the outsides with some of the original flesh colour or even if you need to add in a little bit of brown just to sort of like get that match with the shade in the recesses from the wash um, and yeah it's come out quite well if I turn them around picked out some of the details on his quiver with some of the, um, I think it was Iraqi sand I might have used, same on the bow here, picked out the arrows, just gave them some fletching, um, for his hair I used the, uh, I think it was Iraqi sand and the um, sort of like bleached bone kind of colour, just to pick out the strands, you don't have to pick out exactly the strands which are on the model, because if you make sure that the contrast is there between the brown base coat and the much lighter top coat, 
you can almost sort of like paint whatever lines you want they don't have to be modeled on the actual model they just need to stand out no one's going to look at it closely enough and say oh this doesn't match up so quite happy with this legolas uh, with how he's come out and i'd say he's actually better than the one i've painted for myself so i may have to either revisit this model or potentially revisit the plastic one so hopefully you found this video useful if you have please like comment subscribe um, I'm hoping to do some more videos like this where they're relatively quick painting guides. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll speak to you soon. Bye.